It's in America's DNA, and now it's becoming one of our most visible exports. And while the logos are familiar, their menus often are not, as the American restaurant chains adapt to local tastes and taboos. We are constantly innovating. So imagine a McDonald's without the beef. Right from day one, we've been very sensitive to the local culture. Or Subway footlongs without the bacon or ham. It's sizzling and it gives the same impression as the bacon. How about a hot cup of coffee and a can made by Coke? It's all about jumping into alien territory where newer is better and an appetite for fun makes a happy meal morph into a happily ever after. There's a, just a thirst for newness. From Maharaja Mac to Squid Pizza, it's a whole new world out there. It's fast foods gone global. Fast food is big business. It sells more overseas than in the U.S. And here, they do it without the usual American favorites. That's why the world's biggest hamburger chain doesn't serve burgers. No Big Macs, no cheeseburgers, no quarter pounders. In fact, no beef at all. Welcome to McDonald's in India, a country where 80% of the population is Hindu, a religion that prohibits eating beef. Mumbai is India's most populous city. It's not easy to get noticed amidst 20 million people. But you can always spot the golden arches. Yes, and even without the beef, McDonald's is still top dog. I eat at McDonald's four times a week. In 1995, it pretty much pioneered the quick serve concept in India. The secret to McDonald's phenomenal success in India is the willingness to adapt to local tastes. We took that extra step and we started introducing Indian tasting products. So it was goodbye Mayor McCheese and hello McAlu Tiki, made of potatoes and peas with mild Indian spicing. And when we put the aloo tiki out, it was an instant success. So much so that today we are exporting aloo tiki to the Middle East. Another adaptation from classic Indian food is a paneer. It's sort of like slabs of spongy ricotta cheese. McDonald's serves it on a flatbread similar to an Indian roti to create the big spicy paneer wrap. Indians are used to bold flavors in their foods. Some scorchingly hot, some not. And there are lots of vegetarian choices. Right from day one, we've been very sensitive to the local culture. So to start with, we have uh, no beef and pork on our menu, uh, separate kitchens for veg and non-veg, a whole range of vegetarian products. It's about the religious needs of Hindus. It's about uh, respect for the Indian culture because the cow in India is sacred. Similarly, in India, we have a lot of Muslims as well. And in difference to their culture, we've said we will not do pork as well. So beef and pork are out, but chicken is in, very in. And this sandwich rules the roost. The Maharaja Mac. Think Big Mac with two all chicken patties instead of beef. It tastes good, very good. Looking for more bite? Go for the McSpicy Chicken. Most Americans find it too hot to handle, but it's just right in Mumbai, where they grow up eating plenty of spicy curries and chili. Of course, you can find Happy Meals and Happy Kids. And plenty of familiar friends on the menu, like fries and filet -O fish But McDonald's here offers something more intangible than just good fast food. It's selling status. Income levels are rising. We have a very young population. So 60% of the population is 30 years and younger. So they are aspirational. They are looking for, you know, things that are very popular in the West. And all that's worked really well for us from a McDonald's point of view. The newly upwardly mobile crowd flocks to dine with another American icon, the Colonel. But in India, it's more like Kentucky spiced chicken. You won't find these in the U.S. Spicy chicken filet and hot Zingo chicken burger. This is that hot taste which has uh, some chili mixed in it, so I think that's what makes it more Indian than just bland food. Though it's still pretty mild by Indian standards. It'll be more like American because uh, Indians uh, really like uh, things which are a lot spicier, and Americans usually tend to have things which are not so spicy. So it's more of an American taste. 
and American tastes are boring. So KFC took the mashed potatoes and gravy off their Mumbai menu. And get this, many of the best sellers in this fried chicken chain are vegetarian. Like the Veg Zing Kong box, with a fried patty made of veggies, chickpeas, paneer cheese, jalapenos, and corn, with extra hot sauce on the side. There are already 120 KFC branches in India, and it's not just the food that's gone global. It's finger licking good. Apparently, slogans are an international language. And the up and coming tagline is Eat Fresh, since Subway debuted in India in 2001. It's doing fantastically well. We have uh, over 220 restaurants. Uh, our growth plans are very aggressive. We hope to have over 500 restaurants in the next two to three years. Like with other American chains in India, this Subway has no roast beef, and the so-called ham and bacon are really smoked chicken products. We've Indianized the brand a lot, and a lot of the people accept our product. The spicing and ingredients are textbook Indian. It's got pieces of chicken tikka, which are made specially after a lot of research with our, you know, specific uh, masala and sauce. Uh, we have an Indian sort of sauce that we've created for it, which is yogurt-based. And they make all the meat sandwiches separate from the vegetarian subs. Even the serving areas are partitioned. We wanted to take care of that sensitivity to get ourselves more, uh, you know, in sync with the Indian consumer. India doesn't have any homegrown mega chains yet, but there are a few up and comers like Jumbo King Vadapa with 38 stores in Mumbai alone. Diraj Gupta and his wife started the business 10 years ago and they sell variations of just one product, the Vada Pav, known here as the Bombay Burger. Vada Pav is basically a potato patty which is coated with gram flour and then you have a delicious garlic sauce going into it with onions and all of that into a 45 gram bun. Gram flour is made of ground chickpeas. Vada Pav is very popular here sold from carts on just about every corner in Mumbai. But buying them at Jumbo King gives customers some guarantees. It is not going to be about taste, it's going to be about the hygiene. So we have to deliver that same taste with the hygiene elements in which we're missing. And that is how the whole business got built. So he can sell his basic Bombay burger for about 35 cents. That's quadruple what they charge on the street. It's all about image and health since fast food restaurants are a step up from the street food. And they're also getting the Indians used to some new concepts. Before Pizza Hut came to town, most locals thought of pizza as a snack, not a meal. So Pizza Hut is luring more customers, especially younger ones, by introducing up to 30 new products a year in India. Like the Veggie Supreme with this unlikely topping, cornrows, the tandoori paneer, with plenty of chili peppers, paneer cheese, and tandoori sauce. Developing just the right mix of local flavor and fast food know-how takes ingenuity, research, years of experimentation, and testing. McDonald's has three test kitchens around the world. One is devoted exclusively to the Indian, Asian, Pacific, and Middle Eastern markets. And you practically have to be James Bond to find it. But we can tell you, it's in Hong Kong. This is McDonald's super secret innovation lab. There's no sign on the street. It's two floors underground, and thumbprint recognition is required to enter the test facility. This is the forbidden kitchen. Here they create and evaluate the new menu items for 37 countries and 8,000 restaurants. They use a variety of techniques, from bringing tasters into the lab to... We run consumer uh, research, and we also run our focus group. And they rely on feedback from restaurants in the field. It helps them tailor dishes to different cultural preferences. So remember those chicken creations we saw in McDonald's in Mumbai? They originated here. We recently have developed a, a product. It's a McSpicy chicken sandwich. And that one is a crispy chicken served in a bun. And it sells really well in India, and they love it. For Thailand, the lab has developed altogether different tastes. Thai also is very uh, uh, unique for their spices. And Thai people, they love uh, fried chicken. And then we have a, a product called Mac Wings, and then we serve with a Thai sweet chili sauce. This Hong Kong lab also creates menus for mainland China. They hone in on classic Chinese favorites, like pork with fiery chili paste and peppercorn. 
Chinese people, they love spicy foods, like the crispy mala pork burger. This is like with a touch of the Sichuan spicy taste into the uh, pork burger, it's really tasty. They totally switch gears for the Middle East and other regions that require sticking to Muslim or kosher dietary restrictions, including no pork. These will be like, like countries like Singapore, Malaysia, and some part of Middle East. For their Japanese consumers, the lab knows it's all about seafood, seaweed, and wasabi. So the team came up with these inventions. The wasabi fish sandwich, the Ebi burger, which is bursting with baby shrimp, and the shake a shake of fries. So we pull the french fries into the bag. Add your own seasoning. You can do this shake shake. Seaweed is the most popular coating. Also in Japan, Coca-Cola is hitting it big with a drink that's hot, not carbonated, and sells 4 billion cans a year. And later, Ronald McDonald keeps kosher in Israel. When you are born in Israel, you know what the Israelis is want. When the American fast food bandwagon headed overseas, Japan was one of the first stops. But because the Japanese had such a strong tradition of extremely fresh food, the fast foodies had a lot of convincing to do here in Tokyo. This is what the locals are used to eating, sushi and sashimi. And Japan has its own fast food sushi chains, like this one called Tenka Sushi. The raw fish and rice combos come to you on a conveyor belt, so they're nicknamed floating sushi restaurants. These places, because they've got such high turnover, that they, whatever they serve to the customer should be always fresh. There's a strict rule that items can only stay on the belt for 15 minutes. The prices are fixed. White plates cost about a buck 75. Blue ones, just over three dollars. Both much cheaper than local upscale sushi restaurants. This is the competition for the American chains who have to step up their game to succeed in Tokyo. Japanese customers have high standards for quality. And McDonald's was paying attention. We're the second largest McDonald's market in the world, serving 1.5 billion customers in a country of 125 million people. One reason for McDonald's meteoric rise here over the past 40 years is innovation. There's just a, a lot of new products that are being developed in the Japanese market, which is why we also do the same. We'll launch um, a number of new products that'll come in for three weeks, you know, bring customers in, get them excited about a new product. It'll be gone, and then we'll come out with another one. The Japanese love their seafood. So as we saw in Hong Kong, Mickey D's created the Ebi Burger in its Asian laboratory. It's the patty stuffed with shrimp. The research showed that women customers have a special yen for shrimp. Japanese women, you, you know, love shrimp very much. I do too. Of course, Tokyo McDonald's has the regular Mickey D's lineup, but they also serve something called chicken tatsuta. It's a chicken patty marinated in a very Japanese ginger sauce and uh, with a shredded cabbage and on a steamed bun. And it's, the bun is actually hand rolled. Kind of a Japanese, maybe a soy flavored chicken with cabbage and mayonnaise. So it's not something you're gonna find in the States. Another uniquely Japanese sandwich is the Tamago Double Mac, which is two beef patties, sausage, and egg. The Japanese eat more eggs per person than just about anyone else in the world. So by adding items like Tamago and teriyaki burgers, McDonald's tries to make locals feel at home. I think many Japanese consider McDonald's to be their brand. They've grown up with the brand, so it's, uh, it's very close to them. They would like customize it so they would match our taste buds rather than American taste buds, you know? I love it. <laughs> Subway is another import, and its motto of eat fresh fits right in. Subway is the fastest growing chain in Japan right now. On the menu, teriyaki chicken, and in this land of seafood lovers, the most popular one is avocado and shrimp. We have a, a shrimp on the bread with the avocado and the salad, and then uh, wasabi sauce on top of it. Very good. Yeah. It's messy. But Japan was no stranger to fast food. A local chain called Yoshinoya opened its first beef bowl stand in 1899, and it's been growing ever since. 
The Yoshinoya chain has more than 1,400 restaurants in nine countries, including branches in the United States, delivering this fast, good, affordable, high quality, and traditional.